The Wisconsin Badgers and Iowa Hawkeyes meet on Saturday in a game that Wisconsin would really like to win and not, you know, lose five of six. These two teams last played on January 2nd. A lot has happened since then. But what can we learn from last time these two teams played? Well, I went back. I watched the tape. So you don't have to. We are going to dig into that question here on today's podcast. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a six-pack, the Scotty Six-Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrist, and you can follow me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrist, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six-Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. This matchup is not all that different from the first one, but there are some notable, you know, differences in rotations that might come into play. Some, you know, tried and true methods of dealing with this Iowa defense that will come into play here. And it all starts with the fact that this is kind of the same old Iowa. Uh, you, you have Fran McCaffrey, who is not doing much of anything different than, than he usually does. Iowa, which is 14 and 11 on the season, six and eight in the league, has an adjusted offensive efficiency of 14th in the country. 14th best offense in the country, according to Ken Palm, but the 174th ranked defense, according to Ken Palm. It's an offense that plays with an up tempo, an up tempo speed. They they play the 18th quickest adjusted tempo in the country. Wisconsin has played a bevy of games against teams that, you know, play relatively quick, quick paced, like Arizona, Arizona, Wisconsin, and Iowa played 76 possessions in that game. Wisconsin and Iowa played 75 in theirs. Apart from the Arizona game, Wisconsin has not played a 75 possession game in regulation other than against Iowa this season. Thinking Wisconsin played against Nebraska was a 75 possession game, but that one went to overtime that had five extra minutes. So this is the fastest pace that Wisconsin is probably going to be expected to play at this season. The rest of the way, I, I would imagine right right now, Ken Palm projects Wisconsin and Iowa to play 69 nice possessions on Saturday. And that, that would be the highest number of possessions that Wisconsin would play in this season remaining. Now, I don't think that Wisconsin is going to want to play at that same frenetic pace this time. I think Wisconsin is going to probably try to dip that number from 75 closer to that 69 nice number. Probably this game ends up getting played more in the low 70s, 71, 72, if, if I would guess. Uh, because some of the buckets Wisconsin got in the first game against Iowa were some Big time transition buckets. Uh, th this was this was the game that Chucky Hepburn put one off the glass for AJ Store to slam home in transition. A game that Max Klesman gave AJ Store an alley oop dunk in transition. It's a game that Max Klesman had a steal and then went and found Chucky Hepburn for an and one in transition. Th there are there are a few moments in here where the pace is just quicker and it's not that Wisconsin can't get transition buckets right against other teams but it's a team that in in Iowa that usually doesn't turn the ball over very often they they have the 11th best turnover rate in the country and it's you know very standard for what this Iowa team does but where where it all starts for for Wisconsin because the offense you know like we said at times it can be high flying it can be great you get these really exciting transition plays, but Wisconsin needs to start on the defensive end in this game. And it starts with Max Klesman trying to, again, lock down Peyton Sanford for Iowa. Peyton Sanford can knock down shots from basically anywhere on the floor between the game that he played at Wisconsin. And then I went back and watched the, Maryland game that Iowa played uh, as you're listening to this now two nights ago. 
I, I thought Peyton Sanford was really, really impressive. I mean, he started something like three of three from three in that game. He he can hit in the mid range. He can finish, you know, ne- near the rim, getting getting some bunny hop buckets on on the wing. I I think he is an excellent, excellent player. And Max Klesman was Peyton Sanford's primary defender the first time these two teams played and held him to nine points uh, despite him taking 11 shots, four of them coming inside the arc. He didn't make any of them it was three of seven of three. I think that says a lot considering that this Iowa team is not a particularly great three point shooting team, but you kind of miss that. If you're, you miss the Peyton Sanford of it all. If you're just looking at the number of threes Iowa takes and makes, because as a team, Iowa is shooting near the bottom of the country in terms of number of three point attempts that this team wants to make. Uh, in terms of their total point distribution, they rank 329th in the country for their points coming from three pointers and 18th in the country on their points coming on two pointers. So far, 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 far more of Iowa's points are generated within the arc, but you kind of miss the Peyton Sanford of it all. If you just look at those numbers, if you just look at the team's three point shooting numbers, which are very middle of the pack, kind of because of the fact that Peyton Sanford, you know, brings up some of those numbers. He's an excellent three point shooter in and of himself. And Wisconsin is going to need to not lock him down because Iowa does a really, really good job of setting up open looks for Peyton Sanford, whether that is through dribble penetration and then finding the open man, or if it's, you know, doing some stuff, getting, getting good movement around the perimeter, forcing defenders to switch, and leading to to an open look. I thought Max Klesman did a pretty dang great job in the first game against Peyton Sanford, and he's he's going to have to do it again uh, against Iowa on Saturday in a game that Wisconsin is probably going to have a harder time winning than it did at home inside the Kohl Center. Um, if it's not Peyton Sanford, a- another player that, Wisconsin really needs to show up in this one is Stephen Crowell. Stephen Crowell kind of flexed his muscles the other night against Ohio State. You know, f- for a stretch of this season that we had all kind of criticized Stephen Crowell for. He he had not been getting to the basket with a particular oomph, to, like to, to put it with emotionally rather than logically, right? He, he just was not aggressively getting to the hoop. And it, it was noticeable the way that he was really dominantly demanding that he gets himself around the rim and getting those post touches uh, against Ohio State. In Greg Gard's postgame presser, and I keep coming back to this, I, I found this point really interesting, was a question asked by uh, Jim Polzine of the Wisconsin State Journal to Greg Gard. He asked, you know, how do you get that aggressive Stephen Crowell to show up? And Greg Gard's answer was simply, like, we have to get him the ball. We, as a coaching staff, are demanding this team to get Stephen Crowell and Tyler Wall the ball in the post. And Greg Gard kind of went on and said, this was not a suggestion the past few days it was it was demanded and that demand was pretty directly communicated he said with kind of a smirk on his face it, it, indicating that i i think he kind of gave it to the guys a little, a little bit in that in that locker room saying hey we play better when steven crowell is is playing well and the last time wisconsin and iowa played steven crowell played pretty dang well uh Stephen Crowell had 14 points on four of eight shots inside the arc. He made two three pointers. Uh, he did have four turnovers, which I think is a little bit of the downside there and something that he would have to clean up. There was one in particular that, you know, was a really bad errant pass. He, he was trying to hit an 
uh, a, Ch- a Chucky Hepburn for an open three, but uh, I-, I was I was starting point guard. Uh, Tony Perkins really just ate, ate it up on that one. That, that was a bad turnover that Stephen Crowell had the last time these two teams played, but Stephen Crowell is going up against o- Owen Freeman in this one. Oh, I was starting center. The likely, I-, I think probably the front runner for, for Big Ten freshman of the year this season. He He is an excellent, you know, rim protecting center, but he is a little bit undersized, especially compared to what a Stephen Crowell is. Um, I think Stephen Crowell plays this matchup really, really, really well. If Wisconsin can bring Stephen Crowell out on the perimeter, right? So some of the concepts that Wisconsin can, can run here with a little high, low action between Stephen Crowell and Tyler wall that worked really well. The first time these two teams played, and it looks like something that other teams have kind of keyed in on when playing against Owen Freeman. And Iowa. You can think back to a couple of different sets where St- Stephen Crowell got the ball in from the perimeter down low to Tyler Wall in a pass. Tyler Wall gets doubled and Stephen Crowell ends up being the beneficiary of him playing the high low action at the top really well, because once Stephen Crowell realizes that Tyler Wall is doubled, Crowell makes a direct beeline to the basket and he ends up getting it back like on, on a given go to end up finishing at the hoop. There's another two times where Stephen Crowell gets around the perimeter in that game and is able to just bury a a couple of open look threes. If you can, and I think part of this high, low action was not just for Stephen Crowell in this first game. It's a reason Tyler wall was actually so, so successful against Iowa. Tyler wall had 19 of his own points. He was four of six shooting and he shot 13 free throws. The first two times these teams played and If Owen Freeman's primary job on defense when Iowa is playing man to man is going to be defending Stephen Crowell, I want Wisconsin to really drive Stephen Crowell out to the perimeter. Take Owen Freeman, who is much better at a rim protector, right? He's a much worse defender out in space. And in Maryland, Iowa's last opponent realized this as well. He was not particularly great uh, defending against Julian Reese in the pick and roll action. I I think if they can get Owen Freeman away from there, let Tyler wall, you know, go up against Ben Cricky down low. I I was starting power forward. That's a much better option for, for Wisconsin than Tyler wall, potentially having to move through both of those guys And, and Steven Crowell's, you know, threatening presence as a three point shooter should make that really liable his his presence as a, a guy who can you know t- make a shot from basically anywhere on the court should make that high low action all the more important make it all the more believable and will go a long way in beating this Iowa team another few freshmen that I want to talk about in this game some on the Iowa side some on the Wisconsin side I think are going to be really really important to this matchup because it's not just Owen Freeman, although, although he is great. I, I think there are some other freshmen in this game that that are, I mean, for me personally, maybe the most compelling pieces of this matchup and the pieces that will tell us the most about what is going to happen down the stretch of this game. And we're going to talk to you all about that after. We tell you about our friends over at TickPick uh, because TickPick is where I get tickets to any sporting event that I would like to go to. If it's sporting events, if it's concerts, if it's comedy shows, I'm getting those tickets on TickPick because TickPick doesn't believe in hidden fees. You're, you got to be tired of paying fees, processing fees, delivery fees, service fees, wh- whatever people want to call them, right? On, on ticket selling apps. Get fee-free tickets every single time you want to go to a Wisconsin Badgers basketball game by buying those tickets on TickPick. Uh, I, I was looking. Iowa is is saying that this is a a sold out game, but you can go and get tickets on TickPick for just twenty five bucks for a Saturday afternoon game in Iowa City. If you're a Southwest Wisconsin Badger, you get out there, get get to that game. Uh, sh- should be excellent. And, and Iowa is having a a blackout inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. Uh, go go go! Put a little a little, a little stripes of red. Over over in that blackout, uh, I think that would be quite a bit of fun. 
or everyone. So uh, get down there, use TickPick. And, and if you want to save 10 bucks on your first order, you can use my link that's on the screen right now. You can use my link that's in the podcast description or in the description on YouTube. Uh, use my link, save 10 bucks on your first order on TickPick. Never pay service or delivery fees ever again. Um, the freshmen that I find very compelling in, in this matchup are not just Owen Freeman. It also comes with um, Bryce Harding. I want to make sure I can't read my own handwriting here. Uh, Brock Harding. Brock Harding is Iowa's backup point guard. And he is a really nice change of pace um, com compared to compared to Perkins for, for Iowa. He, he is speedy. He, he is, you know, can, can get a little a little lost on defense sometimes. But, you know, everybody in Iowa can get kind of lost on defense sometimes. It, it is a, a tough guard for most players because of the speed that Brock Harding brings as the backup point guard. And, and if he can eat up some real minutes in, in this game, that, that's going to go quite a long way for, for Iowa. Um, otherwise, Nolan Winter. He had a pretty shaky performance against Ohio State, against, you know, another big rim protecting center in, in Felix Akpara. And against Iowa the first time, when Nolan Winter first got subbed into this game for Stephen Crowell, Iowa went at Nolan Winter right away with, with, uh, with Owen Freeman. It's not like Stephen Crowell, who was able to, you know, get that high-low action we were talking about. Stephen Crowell also backed down Owen Freeman quite a bit in that game. I think one of the best things for Nolan Winter would be to say, no, I'm going to be confident. I'm going to try to back down this, you know, all Big Ten freshman selection center right here. Go, go to work. It, it, it should be a great preview of some of these matchups for the next couple of years to come between Owen Freeman and Nolan Winter in, in this Badger Hawkeye matchup, which is always, you know, so, so fun to watch. And if it's not those two guys, it is also John Blackwell. John Blackwell, who played a lot, a lot of minutes in this past game, or in the first game. John Blackwell, who had some really solid defensive minutes. But is he going to play? That's that's the big question here, and is part of the reason I think Wisconsin could be in a position to, to drop a, a tough road game here. John Blackwell played 25 minutes in this game against Iowa back in January. Kamari McGee played 10 minutes. Neither one of those guys have, have played the last couple of games for Wisconsin. Kamari McGee, of course, has been out longer. Kamari McGee isn't going to be back yet for, you know, at least another 10 days. John Blackwell, uh, as I'm recording this on Thursday, he did participate in practice on Thursday. Uh, seems like he's doing a bit better, but th there was basically after he went through warmups and then was a game time decision to not play at, at Rutgers. It looked like there was really no chance, despite him being listed as questionable going into the game against Ohio State. It looked like there was really no chance that John Blackwell was going to play in that game. He never came out for a pregame shoot around. He came out in sweats for warmups. Never, never even tried to give it a go. And this is one of the ways in which Wisconsin and Iowa are, are quite a bit different this season. Iowa had, plays a pretty long bench. Like pa um, Patrick McCaffrey, for head coach Fran McCaffrey's son, he is not a starter, and he doesn't exactly play starting minutes, but he plays something close to it, playing something around, you know, low, you know, like mid-20s in, in minutes per game for this Iowa team. And, and that's just the start of it, right? Iowa is 152nd in the country in, in bench minutes, according to Ken Palm. Wisconsin, as, as we talked about and, and kind of criticized how Wisconsin starting to look not so deep, especially when you have these injuries, Wisconsin is now sub 300 in bench minutes in the country. I think after the Ohio State game, they were 304th in the country, and they've actually slipped a little bit uh, in the last day or two down to 306th. So. Wisconsin's going to be tested and they're going to need some from their bench 
And I think they really need John Blackwell to play in this one. I do not think that Wisconsin can get away with playing AJ Store and Chucky Hepburn the entire second half in this one. Especially if the pace is going to favor Iowa, right? If the pace is going to be that fast, it, it is hard to keep up that energy that entire time. All five starters for Wisconsin played the final 10 minutes and 14 seconds of the second half against Ohio State. It's a long time to go without a rest. Now, part of the reason that John Blackwell played 25 minutes, part of the reason that Kamari McGee played 10 minutes the first time against Iowa, which is quite a bit more than, you know, Kamari McGee in particular would typically get in a game is Chucky Hepburn had a little bit of foul trouble, was in and out of the game as you know, his fouls racked up a little bit. He had four fouls. He picked up his fourth with a little over five minutes left in regulation. So there, there is that, but if Wisconsin gets to a spot in this game where you have starters playing for quite a long time, if John Blackwell can't go in this one, there's a chance Wisconsin just gets tired. They get heavy legs and can't, you know, f finish the job here. It looks like they're getting blown by on, on defense because I was got, you know, for, for as much as this is not a great Iowa team by any means, they don't have a Keegan Murray on this one. I was got some really athletic guys who, who can make shots from just about anywhere. Uh, I think about Ben Cricky again, I was starting power forward as you know, he's not exactly like a Tyler wall. He, he's quite a bit different from a Tyler wall. Tyler wall, I think is much better. He has but like he has way more post moves than Ben Cricky does, but Cricky can step out and, and hit some stuff in the mid range that Tyler wall doesn't really have in his bag. Cricky can hit the three a little bit better than Tyler wall can uh, on the season. Ben Cricky is hitting 35.7% of his three pointers, although he only has 14 attempts. So like there, there's a little, there, there's not a huge sample size there to back all that up, but he can do it. If, if Iowa has these guys who, who can run around a, a Tony Perkins, who, who is an excellent, excellent point guard and, and draws a lot of fouls, right? Wisconsin just starts getting heavy legs. This could be a, a game where Wisconsin gets got just kind of because they don't have enough horses to run with this frenetic Iowa offense. Um, I think Iowa, uh, they, they go to a two, three zone on defense every, every now and then they didn't go to that two, three zone against Wisconsin much at all. I, I don't think they went back to it after like the very first time they went to it kind of early in the first half. So I, I don't know if I would expect that to happen. Wisconsin, you know, Greg guard, Bill Ryan, right. This part of their thing is they never play zone. I think Greg guard takes some, uh, specific pleasure in beating his own. And Wisconsin did it on the very first possession that Iowa went to that two, three zone, beat it with a great, you know, cut to the basket by, by Tyler wall. Um, yeah, I, I think th this game sh should be a big test for, for this Wisconsin team. Because last time these two teams played Wisconsin, you know, although it didn't necessarily blow out I Iowa, you know, it was a, a comfortable win. And Wisconsin had Iowa at arm's length most of the way. But I was going to want to maybe make a statement that their last time out where they ended the game getting outscored 21 to 6 by Maryland to end that game. Iowa came out in Maryland and had a lead for quite a bit of that game and a double digit lead for quite a bit of that game and really blew it. And, and I don't think they're going to want to do it again. Uh, I, I think this Iowa team is not great defensively getting an aggressive Chucky Hepburn going early is going to be big in this one too. He can, you know, really threaten folks by, getting to the rim early and making defenses collapse in on him. I don't think this Iowa defense is really good at, you know, anticipating when it, when a kick out, 
out for an open three point shot is going to come. I don't think they're very good at that. I think a test for Wisconsin on defense in this one is going to be defending dribble penetration, which sets up a lot of what Iowa wants to do. Um, I know that this like rot- rotation offense that Fran McCaffrey runs is qu- quite often based on a lot of these timely cuts, but th- this season, it seems like it's not as much that, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I don't know ball enough, um, but it seems like a lot of these baskets that Iowa gets are, are coming from drill penetration to start and, and drives to the rim, which I mean, that's explains why you, you are one of the, best teams at, at going to get shots from two and one of the worst teams at put at jacking up shots from three. So, all right. Uh, yeah, I, I think this should be a, a fascinating game early in the day on Saturday should give you enough time, win or lose to, to recover and uh, go ahead and be ready for the next one. Uh, be ready, be ready to get the rest of your Saturday going. Uh, we will be live on spaces at halftime as always on the website, formerly known as Twitter. You can follow me there at Kedrick Stumbrus. Uh, as we break down some of the first half action in this game. And then we'll have a reaction podcast up in your feed Saturday afternoon, shortly after the game ends. Got to hope you win this one uh, because it's going to be tough the rest of the way in some of these, in some of these games as well. You, you got to host Maryland, which I mean, you have a first team, all big 10 point guard in that one in, in Jameer Young. Then you got to travel to Indiana. Indiana's not great, but you still have to go on the road in the Big Ten, which is never easy. And then after that, you know, you, you have Illinois, which is a great team. And then you got to host Rutgers, which you've already lost two once on the road. And you have to travel to Purdue. If Wisconsin loses here, there, there's a chance this could really spiral just because the back end of the schedule all of a sudden looks a lot harder, especially those last three games that that game with Rutgers looks a lot harder now that you lost it. So you want to get consecutive wins here. You want, you want to steal a road win if you can um, in the big 10, where it is always, always tough to get this road win. But I think that's going to do it for today's Scotty six pack podcast. Thank you very much for listening on your pack podcast platform of choice. While you're here, leave a nice review, five stars, kind comments really does help people find the show. You can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty six pack. And while you are there, hit the bell so you get all the latest updates in Wisconsin sports whenever we put new episodes into your feed on Wisconsin.